Well, avoiding breakup of monetary union is going to be very challenging, and this is as much a political as an economic question, uh, because ultimately, if there's sufficient political will, you will be prepared to pay the economic price to keep the union together, and we should be in no doubt that there will be a price to keep it together, but the price will be substantially lower than the consequences of a breakup of monetary union. Now, that's a very difficult proposition to sell to your voters, and we see this all the time in the core countries who are realising now that they're going to have to pick up the bill for this. So I think there are essentially three dimensions along which monetary union could be saved. One is through reform, if you like, a supply-side response, which is to improve the economic performance right across the Eurozone, but particularly the peripheral economies, and some progress has been made there. The problem with that, though, is in the short run, the effects can be rather negative in terms of economic activity. So there are long-run benefits, but the short-run effects, in some cases, can be negative. And that's a little problematic right now, given that we've got extremely high levels of unemployment in the peripheral economies, which brings us on to the second dimension along which we could see survival of monetary union, which is reflation. Now, you'll notice immediately this is at odds with what's happening on the fiscal front right now, which is we have a very aggressive fiscal tightening going on, particularly in the peripheral economies. And I, I think uh, essentially uh, the markets and the politicians have decided that the peripheral economies really do have to tighten their belts and to achieve fiscal sustainability they will have to have a multi-year fiscal contraction. That's all very well but this is not being counterbalanced by any offsetting fiscal loosening in the core countries. So if you look at this in aggregate the Eurozone fiscal stance is very tight indeed and that I think is a, a challenge uh, both in the short run and in the long run. Now of course you could have reflation of another kind, which is on the monetary front, with support from the European Central Bank. And indeed, that is the path that we've been following over the last couple of years. And I would expect the European Central Bank to have to do more. They've engaged in very unconventional methods to support the Eurozone economy and offset the fiscal austerity that's coming through. But I think overall, the thrust of um, macro policy in the Eurozone is still extremely tight and I think you only have to look at the performance of economic activity to see that. Now there's a third dimension along which you could see monetary union surviving which is redistribution. This is the third R so we've got reform, reflation and redistribution. If you look at successful monetary unions in history they have involved a very substantial element of redistribution from the rich to the poor in the Eurozone context. This is from the core to the periphery, of course. Again, is, this is very politically challenging, but this is the record that we've seen around the world in terms of successful monetary unions. Even in the United States, which is hardly a bastion of socialism, there are much bigger transfers, fiscal transfers, than we currently see in the Eurozone. And I think this is the political challenge that the core countries have to confront to sell to their electorates over the next few years that the eventual destination is indeed a fiscal union, a transfer union and political union. That in the long run is the only way in which monetary union will survive in my view.